everybody. You've probably heard a lot about D&D &D in the last couple of years, kind of weirdly more than you've heard for the last couple of decades. Um, so I'm going to tell you why. Uh, so Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game. It was invented, published in the 70s by Gary Gygax and Dave Artisan. Uh, it lost popularity in the 1980s as a result of religious objections, satanic panic, um, the idea, and yes. So for a long time, only hardcore nerds were uh, <laughs> mostly into D&D, including my own uncle. Uh, but in 2014, uh, Wizards of the Coast, which is the publishing outfit, released 5th edition, which was more based on story as opposed to math. So it was more accessible. So. For D&D, do I need a basement? No. <laughs> All you need is a table, a bunch of chairs, some nerds, and some snacks. Snacks are very important. You do also need some dice, paper and pencils, books, and your imagination. Um, there are apps for a lot of those components, just so you know. <laughs> In case you're uh, not an analog person. So why do you need books for this? Um, there isn't necessarily a game board. You build stories based on three books. So the first book is the player's handbook. It contains everything you need to build characters um, to start on telling stories and how to actually play the game. So the Dungeon Master's Guide is sort of self-explanatory. Um, it contains all the information, a, a lot of information to help a Dungeon Master design a D&D game and help run it. Um, and then the Monster Manual uh, is basically a bestiary of uh, different creatures and monsters you may find in uh, whatever worlds you're populating. I have stats, etc. So, um, okay. So some important terms to know that will get thrown around if you are playing D&D. First one is a PC or an NPC. So a PC is a player character, is a character that your players at your table are driving. NPCs are non-player characters that the DM controls. I'm also a player, I don't know, I mean, you know. Uh, an encounter is a specific event, an adventure is like a quest, and a campaign is sort of an overarching story that could be composed of many encounters and adventures. <laughs> so, one of your main workhorses, well, your main workhorse tools is dice. Um, these dice are used to do pretty much anything, and they add, uh, an element of chance to the game, which can be really fun. So, like, Dungeons and Dragons is both a game and a story. Um, I would say it's a game because dice rolls do uh, determine the outcomes. You can level up, uh, work the stats, etc. But also, D&D is, is about telling a story, um, playing characters that really matter to you. Um, and in my games, I take that opportunity to create characters who are queer or trans and stuff like that because that's important to me. And it really, especially with 5th edition, the rules, the, the process, it's all very flexible. So basically what you prioritize as a player, and you can learn that, is what whatever you put in is what you get out. So how do you successfully play D&D? The first thing is what I just said. Figure out what aspect of the game you like. It could be something as simple as you like getting treasure. It could be something like you like to role play, or you like to do all the stats in battle. Figure out what you, what part of it you like the most, and join a group of people who have similar priorities. <coughs> your DM is your friend. They, hmm. a good DM wants to see you succeed, but they also want to challenge you. Communicate with them. So how did I get into D&D? First of all, I had some friends who, well all of my friends are big nerds, and one of them saw an opportunity to loop us all into D&D, &D, and we've been playing for two years now. Uh, I also listened to a couple of podcasts of actual play of actors um, who played D&D &D and then streamed it. So uh, being a player is super fun and awesome and not very much work at all. DMing is a lot of work, but it's super fun, and the power is... <sighs> uh, so as a DM, definitely don't be afraid to steal ideas from your players when they make jokes or they're just kind of uh, shooting the shit. Be subtle about it, you know? You don't want your players to feel like they have too much power. Um, but it's, 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 uh, it's really fun. But basically just listen to your players, know the rules, enjoy yourself. So my favorite part of D&D, &D, of course, is that when you put all these nerds in a room together, 
you get some hysterical stories and things. So one of our first sessions in my friend group where I've been a player, character, player, uh, we had a, an interrogation session with a goblin, excuse me, that ended with some kind of leg removal. Um, <laughs> and instead of just murdering the goblin, our gigantic like uh, lizard man character, Dragonborn, um, baby Bjorned him and took him with us as a guide. <laughs> so, uh, and then my favorite thing from my current campaign as a dungeon master is, which I play with a group of all girls, and um, uh, it basically started as a joke with my players that one of them came from a town called Yoloheim, <laughs> which I, I absolutely <laughs> immediately vetoed. <laughs> there was also Yeetville thrown around, also vetoed. However, they, I let them talk me into Svagheim or Swagheim, which is now canonically the Vegas of our world that I now have to build. <laughs> so um, that's my little five minute spiel about D&D. Um, if you're interested in playing, it's easy to get into, not easy to escape once you're in. Um, that's it. Okay, so as Dungeon Master, mm -hmm. what exactly are you doing? That is a great question. So the Dungeon Master's role is to do a couple of things. It is to arbitrate the rules of the game. As a DM, you know all the mechanics. Uh, the, the, the way that you, um, as a DM, basically run your game is you have, you're in charge as a DM of the world itself. You can build your own, you can use a prefab, world that is published with um, by Wizards of the Coast, you so you're responsible for basically building the world that then your players get to role play in. So for example, in a session, I would if I'm the DM, um, it would be my responsibility to weave a word picture and set the scene for my player characters. And what I what you do as a DM is you're setting up situations in which characters have opportunity to make choices that then result in story. So I might, I might describe to you, um, okay, so uh, you, Sonia, are playing yourself, Sonia, and Sonia, you enter a cave, and the cave is, is dank, and you, it, it smells musty, and you, uh, you can't, you can't you, all you hear is echoes from like the dripping water on the ceilings. Um, you can't see more than about 15 feet in front of you, and you um, roll a perception check is what I would say. You would roll your die. If you rolled well, I might tell you more information about what you could hear, see, smell, feel. If you roll lower, like, or if you roll a one, I'll be like, oh, you think you're in a cave. Wow, that's yeah. like burlesque of story. I love that. I, mean, I don't know what that means, it's but I love it. It's a slow reveal. It's like yes. the love off. And absolutely, so, so for example, <laughs> I love it so much. So as a DM, though, I may not have an idea, uh, like I have like an end game basically. So I know who the villain is. I know where they are. My player characters don't know. They're basically the characters in a movie that I'm telling them. That, but I change what I'm doing based on the choices that they make. So I'm not like railroading them. I'm saying, hey, you're in this situation. Uh, who, are you gonna choose to help this guy? Are you gonna try to persuade him? Are you gonna try to slay the monster? Building a framework for them to build meaningful stories. One of you guys fight it out. Me. What do you got? Um, so I'm not really clear. When you on when you create the story mm -hmm. as DM, is it one story for lots of sessions or is it one story per session? Like is it one world? It really so the greatest thing about uh, D D, especially fifth edition, is that it's infinitely flexible. So I've Excuse me, I've written, um, so, so you have, so like I said, you have the, an encounter, which is like, a, like we're having a conversation, that's an encounter. If you have an adventure, that's like, oh, we need to like go into this cave and like do some stuff, but it might take, like it's, it's multiple encounters like strung together. And then <laughs> in a, a campaign, it's like a much longer, like it could, a campaign could technically cover decades of story time. So to answer your question, um, you, you, you can run 
Dungeons and Dragons where you can play one session and have a contained story. Usually it's a little more formally designed because you have less space for like, you know, hijinks. Um, but for the most part, people set up groups that meet consistently. And as a DM, I try to have like an overarching story arc of like, and I didn't think of this all this at the beginning, like it's developed as my players keep doing things or things. Do you take notes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Some. Just like, you have to remember the shit you said last week, right? <laughs> yes, so I do, ta I do ta yes, I take notes on the important things that happen. Um, mm -hmm. But to uh, what you had said about, um, how long it would like. Oh yeah, so you could, you could technically like, say you're going, you're, your people are going into a cave. Again, cave, caves and taverns are going to be your workhorses. <laughs> okay. If you don't start with a, a tavern and it's end up in a cave, like it's not a deep. No. <laughs> uh, Just not as catchy of a name. Right? The, like, what? Parks and recreation. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, so you could have something, a story, or like, you know, a battle or whatever that lasts for one session, which is a few hours or whatever. Or you could have something that's like in multiple like chapters or episodes or something that stretches over multiple sessions. Someone from this side of the room, anybody? That's fine. That's so patient. Aww. How do you deal with uh, players trying to derail your plans, <laughs> trying to tickle a Balrog or things like that? <laughs> so, so two things. The first thing, and actually something I learned that is so amazing from the, the I, I didn't really, I kind of skated over this, but to um, actual play things. One of the podcast ones like uh, YouTube and, uh, that I've learned from them is that sticking too much to the rules can get really old really fast, but going off the rails entirely makes it into not as much of a like game anymore. So um, I, so like with the, the Svagheim thing, I was like, I'm not giving, like you have to, it's a, it's a give and take, right? Like. Sometimes you allow things and sometimes you don't. And it's up to the DM to kind of arbitrate, is this adding to the story? Is it just like funny for funny's sake? How long, you know, it's, it's about pacing. Being a DM is, DM is a lot about pacing. Um, does that answer your question, kind of? What, it, what was your question again? <laughs> how do you deal with players? Right, you thank you. Um, so, so how I deal with it is sometimes I indulge it if it's good and sometimes I cut it off if it's not. And I get to choose because I'm the DM. <laughs> Sonia. Um, are you more likely to go on adventures now that you have started doing this in your imaginary world? Um, huh. That's a great question. Me personally, um, I don't think so. But I will tell you that it has made me less nervous about making decisions mm -hmm. because like, 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 a, like an open world video game, you can kind of do things in any order. So on a personal level, it's certainly made it easier or um, it, it's made it easier for me to lower the stakes on some of the decisions I make in my own life. Mm, I like that. that yeah. You know, it's called Dungeons and Dragons, so probably is the answer to my question right there, but do, do you know if anyone uses the same game structure but in like a sci-fi world? Mm -hmm. They do so, Star Wars the same thing. That's what I say. Yeah, so it. there's a lot of different, so D&D is like one of the archetypal, like, archetypal, archetypal um, uh, RPGs, but there are a lot of other games. Um, Pathfinder is another one that's in all the other worlds, like strange space worlds, and and pretty much you could even do Dungeons and Dragons, and you can you can build your in own world space. however you want. Like my, I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to do this, but I wanted to be sci-fi. There is a Firefly RPG. No, really? Yes. Out of the black, look it up. Mm -hmm. Urban Shadows also, which is about like factions and making alliances and stuff. There's a lot of different, um, there's, yes, there are definitely space options for you. Um, there are also like additional like home homebrew classes people have made that are like space pirates and like there's so much that you can play in. Yes, you can play in space and sci-fi and all that kind of stuff. Isn't, isn't there a thing, GURPS, that allows you to put like anything into a, an RPG framework? Yes, but I'm not familiar. Yeah. Gerps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gerps. Okay. G U R P S. General something role playing. Oh, that system. sounds right. Yeah. I mean, D and D, like I said, is infinitely flexible. And how, if, when you're a DM versus a, like the players, don't have much power over this. But as a DM, you get to choose. Like I might sometimes 
excuse me, let a rule slide or adjust like, you know, how bad I make a monster or something because it's better for the story and that's a choice that I make as a DM. Where other DMs might be really rigid about rules or ignore the rules. Jane. What what are some examples of the rules? Like I'm kind sure. of just having uh, trouble I'm kind of just having a, a vision of like I'm in Middle Earth and I get to do stuff. Like yeah. but there's but okay. there's <laughs> rules? Like why yes. are there rules? Like Frodo doesn't so, have rules. So <laughs> <laughs> but Frodo does have rules. Frodo does have rules. Frodo, like does have rules. Frodo <laughs> is is this tall? which means that he can't jump up certain things. Um, Frodo oh, okay, has, sure. Frodo uh, is, is plagued by this like, you know, demon creature that affects his mind, so that potentially does damage to him, um, which, which reflects in, in damage you take as a character, like psychic damage. Um, so any character, all the characters have specific abilities that are like, you know, not necessarily abilities we, have, we would have in real life, but the idea is that Whatever your character is, they have certain limitations um, and certain ways that they can interact with the world, the abilities they have, and there are parameters that govern that, so you don't just like blow up the whole world on your first try. <laughs> hmm. One more? As many as you want, I'll keep talking. <laughs> uh, anybody who hasn't asked a question yet? You got a question. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Better. I already asked one earlier. Does the uh, D&D use the same alignment system? Previous yes, so that's a great question. I didn't touch on the alignment system. So you guys may know this from any kinds of games you play. Um, uh, the alignment system is a way of categorizing um, sort of characters' moral alignments. I mean, it, so you have a, so think of it like a, um, it's a nine square box, right? Like a grid. And you have a, a cross section between lawful, neutral, and chaotic versus good, neutral, and evil. So for example, like a hell beast that's, that's bent on destruction would be something like, but that doesn't really have a, like a, a tribe or a system of government, they would be more like chaotic evil. They just want to watch the world burn. And lawful evil is President, or Vice President Pence? Ooh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, maybe neutral evil, because he seems bent on uh, manipulating the law for his own gains. Mm. So. Uh, <laughs> But something like chaotic good would be somebody who's like, I will protect my people, but like the greater good, I don't care. <laughs> but like, so, so there's, so the elements of, of chaos to lawfulness is a really interesting spectrum. And as a DM, like the way your characters level up or your players level up is by getting experience. So if you, some DMs, I do this, if you act in a way that's particular to the alignment your character has, you get extra experience points. I like that as a role playing thing. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> so, just to come back to my yeah, sure. timeline one before, like, how long have you been DMing that one world that you've created? So, I've been a player character for a couple of years. And Do you play the same character? Like, this is like one yes, story? Yes, so I play a character named Kira Sprightly, <laughs> who's a, a, a known wizard. She's very little, and she will literally kill a man for a book. Like, she is, she is all about the, I mean, she won't literally kill a man. She's neutral good. Um, but so as a DM, yes, yeah, so, so as a campaign, you have the same characters the whole time unless they die. And that's been two years? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, that's I mean, we play time. like once a month every six weeks or so. Okay. Um, but so in game time, we haven't, we're pretty slow, so it hasn't gone more than like a month or two in game time. But um, uh, yeah, but so as a DM, I've been, I started my girls group. Um, the beginning of this year, and we've played four or five times. The first time I ever DM'd was actually for my family. <laughs> it was real hard, I will tell you that. It was, it was really hard. Um, but they have to love me, so they were good. <laughs> um, so, so yes, so D&D &D groups, you tend, to, it's like theater groups, like anybody who hears on theater or anything like that, like your D&D &D group, D&D groups gel. Um, if they're you know good and it's good if you're already friends, but there's a special kind of bond I think that develops in telling a story together, and in the kind of like silly hijinks and inside jokes that develop. So it's a pretty powerful so, so social structure. I think. Great. Yeah. Thank you.